Welcome along to LS11 Extra. It's the opposition view ahead of the Everton game. Brought to you by skinnyboos.co.uk, the home of reduced calorie alcohol, full strength, full flavour and fewer calories. And of course, if you enter the code LS11 at the checkout, you can get some free delivery on some booze before Christmas. And it's low calorie as well. Why wouldn't you? Uh, we're heading towards, of course, uh, Leeds United against Everton. It's the Saturday afternoon, uh, well, Saturday evening kickoff. They keep mucking them around. 5.30 kickoff, and I'm joined by Tony Scott from the All Together Now podcast. Hi, Tony. How are you doing? Yeah, very good. Thank you. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad at all. Not too bad at all. Um, uh, well, we're having a chat just after all these tiers have, uh, uh, have been announced, and you guys are going to be able to have fans back very, very soon. That is fantastic news. It's great news. Um, it's been long awaited, hasn't it? I think everyone's felt the felt the full force of it. To be honest, wherever you are in the country, so it's just to get some kind of normality back into place in terms of getting fans back in stadiums. And there's, I've, I've read a lot of social media posts amongst Everton fans. Think some saying it's either all or not, and but you can't just get from north to forty thousand in the space of a couple of weeks. It it takes its time slowly but surely. So two thousand fans, maybe four thousand. We don't just don't know what's happening. So as long as we get fans in the stadium and get some get kinds of some normality i think the sooner they are the better yeah I, I think so and you know we all obviously want that uh as as quick as possible but you know i think for some fans it's going to be a lot later th- than others but it's just good to see that some fans are able to get back in and, and, and watch games which which is absolutely fantastic um uh let, let's t- talk a bit everton and uh you you, you start of the season well what a fantastic start of the season Everton have had. Are you surprised how you've started and how well you're doing? Uh, a bit of both, to be honest. I think the four wins on the spin, I think, it set the standard there for Carlo Ancelotti. That's what he expects. He hasn't came here to Everton to, to finish mid-table or even sixth or seventh. That's not in his vocabulary, so to speak. If you look at his CV, it speaks for itself. And I think if you... Th- if any football and fan up and down the country thinks Carlo Ancelotti has came here for his last pay packet and just to finish Everton in maybe fifth or sixth, well, that's not going to be the case. It will be sooner but surely. He'll gradually get Everton up that league. So the, the surprise did... Yeah, it was a surprise, yeah. Let, let, let's not get ahead of ourselves. Four wins on the spin. We just didn't expect that whatsoever. But obviously the wheels fell off within three games straight after that. Three defeats against teams that you expect Everton to be getting three points against your Southamptons, your Newcastles, etc. That wasn't the case. A few injuries in there, but let's not. I'm not using that as an excuse. Everton played poorly in them games and deserved to be beaten in all of them. But they got back to winning ways last week. So I'm expecting a really good game against Leeds at the weekend. Yeah, it's sure, sure to be an exciting game. I mean, Carlo Ancelotti plays some uh, attractive football uh, and that's what Everton fans like to see as well. So, uh, I mean, it's, he's an impressive name. Uh, I mean, not many people had heard of Marcelo Bielsa before he came to Leeds United. They might have said they had heard of him, but they really hadn't heard of Marcelo Bielsa. They know who he is now. Yeah. Uh, but with Carlo Ancelotti, that that was a big name manager who has has been at some of the biggest clubs in the world. You must have been overjoyed when you'd heard he was going to be the new Everton manager. I couldn't believe it. Couldn't believe it. And I'm quite luckily and fortunate enough to spend some time in the press conferences. And I'm I'm in all of them. And there's a lot of people in there going, we still can't believe. And I know some of the staff that deal with Carlo Ancelotti on a daily basis at Finch Farm. And they're in all of them all the time. They can't believe we've got a manager of this calibre in at the football club. Now, in my opinion, and I think a lot of Everton fans' opinion, Everton is a big football club. It's one of the founding members of the Football League, Premier League, fourth most successful club in English football, even though we haven't won a trophy for 20 odd years that still is a fact and we do class ourselves as a big club but to get someone of Carlo Ancelotti through the door is just a massive statement of intent from Farhad Mashiri the owner who has backed Everton to the hilt he's put the big name signings in like Richarlison like Hamas Rodriguez we couldn't have thought three or four years ago we've gone from Sam Allardyce and Cuco Martina and Umar Nias to all of a sudden having Carlo Ancelotti and Hamas Rodriguez it's just it's chalk and cheese at the moment and Everton fans we do say about fans getting into the stadium he can't wait to get through them turnstiles to watch these plays in the flesh do you think it was like a concerted effort on the part of like the Everton hierarchy to to, to make an absolute bold move like that because you see what's happening over at the the red half of Liverpool uh, and you see how they've sort of progressed under under Klopp and how they've sort of invested do you think it was Everton thinking actually no we've really got to take this by the scruff of the neck and try and do something 
Yeah, it, it, you're probably right there, to be honest. I think in terms of, you could go throughout the whole history of Everton and Liverpool football clubs and when one is really good, it gives the other one licence to even perform even better. If I, I know lots of Everton fans that would be quite happy if Liverpool finished 17th and Everton finished 16th. That's not the case. You need to, obviously, you need good neighbours there to, to balance yourself on and, and always give you something to, to, to look up to. And as much as it pains me to say it, Liverpool have been the best team over the last 18 months and it gives Everton the impetus now to pull our fingers out. And I remember saying on a few of our podcasts, with Liverpool winning the league, it does make the Everton hierarchy and the managers and the players and the fans all of a sudden stop being bang average in the way they think and, and go, do you know what? We've got to look over across that park and not as if we want to be them, so to speak, but we're, we're inspiring to be right in the mix like them. You, you're spot on. Uh, it's an interesting one as well because like you, you touched on some of the, the, the signings that have been made. And I suppose the one that everybody sort of like uh, was salivating over was James Rodriguez, uh, which was a, a great signing. And, and already this season, he is showing himself to be absolute world class, isn't he? Unbelievable. I I was very sceptical about the move when he first came through the door. I thought, he's 28, hasn't played a lot of football, a lot of injuries. Why didn't it work out at Bayern Munich and Real Madrid? And, and you're always looking for excuses. Why is he at Everton? And that's me being an Everton fan. Why has he come over here? Everton finished in 12th position last season. Has he come over here for another pay packet, using us to, to finish his career off? But... Yeah. When you're watching them on the football pitch, you are in a wow factor. We are so lucky to have a player of this, not just a stature, because he is a world-renowned figure in, in football. When you're watching him with the ball, you're going, how has he seen that? You, it's just some footballers you can look to straight away and you enjoy watching, whether you're a neutral, whether you're a Liverpool, Leeds, Everton fan, you're going, I'd, I'd pay to watch money. So to go and watch it, I really would pay. And he's just a, an elegant footballer, a joy to watch. And that's been the golden thing about Everton starting off the Premier League so well, is that we're not here to watch them in the flesh. And we're going to get that opportunity in a couple of weeks' time against Chelsea. But I think when you're watching players, they don't come round too often. The, the player I can probably compare it to where I've been so excited to watch in an Everton shirt is probably Wayne Rooney. You just couldn't wait to get through to the turnstile and watch this kid at 17 years of age rip defences up and you're going how's he done that this just isn't the norm so these players in Everton shirts they come once in a generation as I just referenced to there Wayne Rooney is probably the last way we just we knew he was going to leave us sooner rather than later but you're just so lucky at the time to watch him now we've got Hamas Rodriguez too we're just going I, I, I'm all, another player that you're in awe of and Evertonians have took two straight away because of what he's bringing to the team I know you can make what you want out of stats and everything else but it there's assists and there's pre-assist. Everything goes through him in terms of if you stop Hamas Rodriguez, you're probably stopping Everton Football Club with the way they play. Him and Richarlison play a pivotal role in our Everton attack teams. Now, with the, Richarlison was missing for two or three games due to suspension in the Merseyside derby and Everton didn't win a game. And in fact, Everton haven't won a game in the Premier League without Richarlison since he's moved there. So I think I just think what he brings to the team is in terms of work ethic. But what Rodriguez brings to the team is just a joy to watch. He's so creative. He can split defences open with one pass. He's just he's miles ahead of anyone else on the pitch. He really is. And he is a joy to watch. It's interesting as well when you say about Richarlison and uh, and and Harmes and yeah they are a joy to watch and they they do make you such such a better team uh, as a whole and, and and you can see I mean look at uh, Dominic Calvert Lewin who is you know the informed striker of this season so far there's no doubting and what's he scored ten so far this season he's on absolute fire England call ups um, he's he's the striker that most teams would want I think this season. And I suppose he's just benefiting from that fantastic service that he's getting from the likes of Richarlison and the likes of, uh, of Harmes. You're spot on again. I think two or three seasons ago, a lot of Everton fans didn't see it in Dominic Calvert-Lewin because he was playing under Marco Silva and Sam Allardyce, running the channels, crossing the ball to a 30-year-old Wayne Rooney and Umar Nias, and I felt so sorry for him. But I could see something in Dominic Calvert-Lewin. You may laugh at this, but two or three years ago, I was I didn't think he'd, he'd turn it on this quick, but I could see something in him that he would reach the top because of his attitude. I think some players quite look, quite young think once they break into the first team they've made it you don't hear them again they get the Louis Vuitton bags and they get the Bentley cars and you think I've already made it here with him he was just so determined to become 
a brilliant footballer. And even in lockdown this season, um, when we didn't know what was happening in terms of last season, sorry, rather, in the Premier League, yeah. there was a lot of players who just didn't know what was happening. They go on on holidays and they were just doing what they wanted to. He was in the gym hour after hour and it was just he's turned from a boy to a man in the space of 18 months putting the hours in the gym constantly and um, putting the training in and now we're looking at his rewards he is a really top footballer at the moment and a lot of Everton fans didn't see it two years ago but I did you could just see it just because of his attitude and he ticks a lot of boxes in terms of what you're looking for in the Premier League in terms of a striker because he he's fast He's strong, he can head the ball, he's getting tappings, he, his energy levels are unbelievable. So if you're looking for, if you're looking to say the top 10 Premier League strikers at the moment, you've got Aguero in there, Salah, and you've got Bamford's playing well at the moment. Yeah. He ticks a lot of boxes in terms of heading ability, his pace, his holds up play, his run the channels, his energy level, everything. He ticks a lot of boxes, Calvert-Lewin, so we're very lucky to have him in the moment, at the moment because he is a brilliant number nine. That Obviously, Everton fans love that number nine shirt. Yeah, it's interesting you say, you mentioned Bamford there because I don't think a lot of Leeds fans wouldn't have thought that uh, Bamford would have taken to the Premier League as, as well as he has done uh, this season because, uh, you know, he certainly missed a lot of chances. His work ethic was fantastic during every game last season, uh, but he did miss miss some chances. So it's interesting that that, that number nine, like you say, number nine shirt is so important for, for Everton. It's, it's so important for, for Leeds as well. What, what are you thinking uh, ahead of, uh, of this weekend? Because you obviously watched uh, a, bit, a bit of Leeds. You've watched a lot of Everton. How, how do you think uh, the teams are going to set up? Because... Leeds come out of the traps pretty quickly and they like to put a lot of pressure on uh, opposition teams, really high press, fast pace. How do you think Everton are going to cope with that? <laughs> to be honest, if, Liber if, sorry, if Leeds come out like that, I think Everton will be forced into some kinds of formation change because you, you sort of know this season from watching Everton what they're going to be like in the first five or ten minutes. And you from watching Tottenham on the opening game of the season, Everton-Tottenham, Everton five minutes in, we're right at it, up the tempo, Richarlison chasing channels, you knew Everton were going to take the points. So it all depends on the first five or ten minutes of Everton play. If Leeds fly at Everton and then Everton fly back at them, I see Everton taking the points, but it all depends on it. See, the thing is, last week, Carlo Ancelotti did a total formation change and went to three at the back, and it, it kind of worked in terms of getting the results, but every time Fulham attacked us, it was on obviously on, on the BBC, on Celestial Television, everyone's seen it, every time Fulham attacked us, they look as if they were going to score, and I weren't comfortable watching it. It was just a case last week of getting the results because we'd on a, been on a poor run. So... If Everton, if, if Everton match leads in terms of how they come at them, I think Everton have got more quality on the pitch in Richarlison and Dominic Calvert-Lewin and Richard, uh, sorry, and James Rodriguez, the two players in midfield, Alan and Takore. A um, bit, bit of a mixed bag at the moment. They are doing five or six men's jobs in the middle because of Everton's wing-backs. They play so high up the pitch in terms of Luca Dean, Seamus Coleman if he's fit too. So, yeah. If Everton match leads for what they give in the first 10 minutes, I think they'll take the points just on the sole basis of the quality Everton have got on the pitch compared to Leeds. But it'll be fascinating. I wouldn't be surprised if there's five or six, seven goals in this because of how two teams will play the game and how they defend. To be honest, I think the two teams will be wide open. Everton haven't kept a clean sheet since the open day of the season. No Leeds, obviously, have conceded a few themselves this season. So I do fancy, <laughs> I do fancy quite a lot of goals in the team. But it'd be fascinating to watch the first ten minutes how it unfolds. It really will because I think that'll set the tone for the full match. Yeah, I think we've, uh, we, we, even on the podcast this week, we were all expecting goals. I think even Ryan and Ben were sort of like predicting maybe that I think they were hoping for a draw, I think, maybe at this one. Um, I think I went for a draw, but with quite a few goals. I'm not great with score predictions, so I think I went like 11 all, something like that. Um, uh, what, what, go on then, score prediction, what are you thinking? I think it'll be 4-2 Everton. I think that'll be, yeah, I, I can see Everton creating a lot of chances. We had a, a journalist on uh, from the BBC on our podcast this week and he, he's he watched a lot of Leeds live this season. He's been lucky enough to, to stand in the press boxes and watch them live and he says they've been great watch but you can easily get at them. And I think Arsenal seen that with even 10 men last season, sorry, last week, that yeah. they created numerous chances. So if Leeds open the door and leave Dominic Calvert-Lewin open, Richarlison, Hammers Rodriguez, I think Everton could 
could fill their boots in terms of goals. I'm not saying they're going to be keeping clean sheets, Everton, because I can see Leeds scoring themselves. It's, we don't trust Jordan Pickford in goal at the moment. He's a bit of a liability. He's not <laughs> flavour of the monks among Everton fans at the moment, as well as the Liverpool fans, as well, to be honest. But I think he's not. I think Everton will concede because they just just look a nervous wreck at the back at the moment. So I fancy Leeds to score, but I just think in terms of quality on the football pitch, on the attack and third, I think Everton have just got far too much quality than Leeds. It's set up for a mouth-watering game, it really is. Saturday evening, 5.30 kick-off, of course, for Everton uh, against Leeds. Uh, big thanks to our sponsors, of course, skinnyboos.co.uk, the home of reduced calorie alcohol, full strength, full flavour, and full of calories. Enter the code LS11 at the checkout to get absolutely free delivery from the All Together Now podcast. Tony Scott, thank you so much for joining us on LS11 Extra this week. Cheers. Well, you're welcome. Well, you're well. Best of luck to Leeds this season.